and looking forward to what God is going to do. We had a great weekend, amen, in the Lord. This weekend is our, our, our Palm Sunday, our Palm Sunday weekend. So come and be with us for Palm Sunday here in the house of the Lord. Uh, April the 14th, we'll be having service and looking forward to making a joyful noise and celebrating our King, amen, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so be with us then and, and also Easter, which is the 21st, 21st of, of uh, April also, right? All right, we've been covering soul winning, amen, we, we in between me and the Reverend here, we've been covering soul winning and dealing with hearts. Last week in Bible study, we talked about weeping for souls, amen, weeping for souls and really just having a burden for the lost, amen. And so even those that have come to the services, those that have been coming and those that will continue to come, it requires prayer, amen. It requires prayer. No doubt that we pray for one another. Pray again as we live in this old world. Satan is there to uh, uh, deceive and he's there to keep men and women away from Christ. But you through and I, you and I, we can go to God in prayer and we no doubt believe in that he is able to deliver souls. Amen. Men and women, I was even reminded of, of Abraham this morning, staying about it, how he went to God in prayer when he saw Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah about to be destroyed. He went to God in prayer. He says, God, if you spread the city, he went all the way down from 50, if there are 50 people there. God says, no, it's not 50, 45, 35, 30, all the way down to five people. He says, Lord, can you spare the city? And no doubt he was interceding. And God, no doubt, gave him an opportunity to come to God. So we see the power of intercessory prayer, amen. And so no doubt, again, whether it's a few or a lot, we continue to be the stem in between. Last week we talked about also, again, going sowing in tears, sowing in tears. We mentioned about sowing the tears. Is that part that, again, it breaks up that hard surface, that hard surface, right? Tears, no doubt we need rain. See, rain today is there to plant that seed, uh, in, uh, cause that seed to go deeper, cause that seed to go deeper into the ground, and so on and so forth. But let's let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13 tonight. And we were talking about seed as we talked about sowing and, again, sowing seed. We talked about the sower last week, sowing all these different seeds. And we uh, liken unto passing our flyers or invitations to the church. Again, we, uh, we we invite a lot of people, thousands of people, hundreds of people. And uh, again, not everybody receives, no doubt. And Jesus gave us a parable here, or uh, illustration about it. And we open up in, in verse 3. Verse 3, the Bible says, He spake uh, many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a soul went forth to sow. As we cover it, he says, And he sowed, and, and some fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. The fowls came to devour them. Number five, it says, and some uh, fell upon stony places where they had uh, not much earth. Forthwith, they sprung up because they had no deepness in the earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root. They withered away, and some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up and choked them. But the others fell on, into good ground, he says, and brought forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, a thirtyfold, uh, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. He begins to talk about, imagine all these seeds landing in different type of surfaces. We see that many times, again, when we invite men and women in church, invite men and women to God, or even preaching to men and women, uh, we mention how to, again, sometimes it's various reactions that we get, various reactions and various responses that people get. The interpretation of that, the disciples understand, so let's look at the interpretation of that real quickly, and we're going to get going to our next pages of this Bible study. The Bible says, verse 19, he said, when one when, when heareth the word, he's, he's referring back to what he just read, when, when one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, uh, then cometh the wicked one and catches the way that which is sown in his heart. So again, uh, we may preach something, we may uh, teach something, and people come to service, or you're dealing with folks, and so when it, and, and they may not be grasping it. They may not understand or they may uh, not be receiving it. And immediately the devil will snatch them away and say, ah, it's not for you. Church is not for you, right? Uh, God doesn't love you. He'll do all type of things. It's just like the enemy. He will come in and try to gobble up that which uh, we see the seed being sown in men and women's hearts. Uh, let's look at verse 20. He says, he that received the seed on stony places, in stony places, the same is that heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it. So even in stony places, we mentioned how things can grow. The environment may not be the greatest. No doubt it's the joy of the Lord. And it's important our environment, amen, your environment. It's important your environment, amen, uh, where you are, especially as a new Christian. Remember getting saved, uh, 
Uh, they really encouraged me to move into the service was home. We have service at home. Why? Because it was there that I could have been on stunted ground. No doubt I received, gave my life to the Lord, but I had to go back into those barracks. <laughs> had to go back to those barracks next to my roommate who was, had a, a 40 ounce in the refrigerator. Amen. Uh, whatever the case may be. And so, uh, again, I'll come back to the loud music, come back to all these different things. Uh, come back to all this drumming that's going on in the barracks. Uh, uh, so, again, the stony ground, many get saved, many may get in the life of the Lord, but they go back to an environment. That's why we're so thankful for the service at home. Amen. And even in your own house, we mentioned over this weekend about what do we fill our house with. Again, we say we have to kick some folks out. Amen. Kick some of your friends out. Kick some of them devils out. Amen. Of your life. And 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 uh, fortunately, we, the service was home was there. No doubt that we can get away. But stony ground, stony ground, he says, they hear the word and receive it with joy. Number 21, he says, and yet, but no root in itself. He says, but doeth for a while. And when tribulation and, and persecution shall arise because of the word and by this, he's offended. And so no doubt when things come their way. Or uh, we even when temptation, another place talks about temptation, and Luke it talks about temptation comes. Uh, how he says when these things come, if there's no root in it, if it's not really sold out, it's easily plucked up. Again, uh, when I first got saved, again they, I started going to church, and folks say, "Hey, we're like we got communion juice for you, man. Come on, come on, we got some communion juice." They were talking about the liquor and the various things as they were, as I was walking down the hall going to church again today because they were trying to pull me back, pull me back, pull me back, and so. Uh, we begin to see how, the, but if there's no root, when you're rooted and grounded in God, you say, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm sold out for Christ. Amen. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to ser uh, serve a living God. And then the many times you have to be uprooted. You have to be uprooted. You have to pull up, come up out of that, that, that stony ground and say, God, put me in the good ground. In verse 22, it says, and he that received the, a seed among thorns is he that uh, heareth the word and, and the cares of this world and the seafulness of riches and choke the word. And he becometh unfruitful. So again, back to that stony ground of various things. Uh, the deceitfulness of sin, the deceitfulness of riches, the deceitfulness of these things. Nothing exchanged for, again, serving and living for God, people. Amen. Don't let anything uh, uh, change that out. Again, uh, it's almost it's almost like going to work. You say, you know what, I've got to get to the house of the Lord every day. Amen. As much as I can. I've got to get to the Lord. It's just as important as that job. Amen. It's more important than that job. Amen. It's more important than, again, to hear some event of various things. I've got to get to the house of the Lord. Again, because these things will uh, choke you out. Things will, the cares of this life will choke many out. Amen. They will choke them out of where they miss once. They miss three times, four times a week. Seven days away from church makes what? One week. And we use that W-E-A-K, week. Not spelled like week, seven days. A week in the spirit, week in, in Christ, amen. Over time, so can you imagine two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks without doing anything spiritual in your life? Man, you eventually gonna drop and die. I mean, what I'm talking about it's important, it's important, it's important. And so, good ground, good ground, good ground. The Bible talks about, and so we want to get on good ground. And verse 23 says, But he that received the word is, is, is good ground, and heareth the word, and understandeth, and he says, It bear forth fruit, it bear forth fruit. God wants you to be fruitful tonight, to be fruitful in your life. Again, fruitful in your soul. He says some 100, some 30, some 60. We mentioned how many various ones grow at different speeds, different levels. But again, we want to see growth in every life. Amen. A uh, stony ground, again, uh, nothing penetrating, as we talked about, nothing is able to penetrate the heart. Which, again, here we live in a hardened world of hardened towards the gospel, hardened towards Christ. But it's important, no doubt, that we have a tender heart towards God. Amen. The tender heart towards God, back to the tears, the tenderize the hearts. Tenderize our souls. We talked about the rocks crying out last week. Uh, again, if Jesus said, if they don't hear me, uh, if they don't uh, cry out, the rocks will. But we don't want to be hard as a rock today, man. We want to be tender towards God. Uh, let's see. Uh, it won't penetrate all the way. Uh, sometimes, again, he said even uh, people will get offended in various things by the word and various things because of the... Um, the hardness of their hearts and various things, not rooting in God. But again, them that love the Lord, nothing shall offend them. Verse 23, again, back to good ground. Fertile ground, I'm going to go in there tonight. Fertile ground. Hey Amen. Get any fertile ground tonight. Let's go to Jeremiah 4, 3 and 4. Jeremiah 4, 3 and 4. Jeremiah 4, 3 and 4. It's important your ground. Be grounded in God. Fertile ground. Fertile ground. Uh, and, and hard versus hard ground. Listen to what it says in verse 3. It says, Thus saith the Lord uh, to the men of Judah and Jeru uh, Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground. He says, and sow not among thorns. Right there. Jeremiah 4, 
Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Verses 3 and 4, he says, let's read again. He said unto, unto the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Uh, again, so fallow ground at hard surface. Think about plowing, plowing, plowing. He's this old preacher term, plowing the fields. He's plowing my fields. <laughs> plowing the fields. And so, in other words, the preacher come through and just, with a plow and just break up all that hard surface. And no doubt, again, they, they can't, nothing can penetrate. The seeds can't grow on hard surface. So the plows that come through with the yoke and the oxen, they have to come through and, and, and break up that hard surface to make the ground. And then they can put the seed in. And so, uh, again, they break up that, that, that shell or break up that hardness of the heart. He went on and said, circumcise yourselves. He said, don't even throw among, uh, among thorns either. He mentioned about thorns, you know, those things, those weeds that will choke you out. Thorns and thistles are weeds. In various places, they choke out you and I. Amen. It's important to, again, be in the right place. Again, to get around the right, on the right surface. Number four, he says, Circum circumcise yourselves unto the Lord. He says, take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah, and the inhabitants of the Jerusalem. Least my fury come forth like fire and, and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. So he says, circumcise your hearts. Amen. Get it right before the Lord. Tender towards God. Tender hearts towards God. Again, so God can penetrate the heart. Penetrate the mind. Because of sin, their hearts got hardened. Because of sin, their hearts got hardened towards God. And he began to let them know to break up that foul ground. One time they were tender before God. They, they feared God. They loved God. But again, some through the deceitfulness of sin, the heart gets hardened. How many know what I'm talking about? It gets hardened. Mankind is so hard towards God. Bible says in verse uh, in Hosea, let's turn to Hosea, same similar type of command. Hosea 10 12. Hosea 10 12. Uh, he this was sowing and reaping again. Sowing. Again, what we've been talking about sowing. He says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Weep in mercy. Reap in mercy. He says, Break up your fallow ground. So again, sow in righteousness. Good seed, amen. Let that good seed germinate in your heart. Sow that thing, amen. Do what's right before the Lord. And no doubt you will reap in mercy. God will show his mercy towards you. Break up the fallow ground again. There it is again. Break up that hardness. Break up those things that once you were tender towards. And again, it's so important to do this. In order to continue to see growth in your life, to see growth in, in, in a church, no doubt has to continue to be tender towards God, amen. Again, so that fallow ground, that hard surface, he says, till I come and rain righteousness upon you. He said, you have plowed wickedness, you have reaped iniquity, and you have eaten the fruit of lies. He says, because thou didst trust in the way in the multitude of the mighty men. So again, back to that about fallow ground. Break up that fallow ground. Break it up. Let's tenderize your heart towards God tonight. Amen. Again, let's look at Luke 8. Luke 8. Luke 8, we talk about good ground. This is the reference back to it. Jesus had the same, the same uh, reference here in Luke 8 from our opening statements here about good ground. I want to just bring this part about good ground out of this. I'm not going to reread the whole thing. In Luke 8, 15. Luke 8, 15. The Bible says, and, and on the good ground, uh, they are, verse 15, Luke 8, Luke 8, 15. Yes, let's read it again. He says, but... That on good ground are they, which is an honest and good heart. Good ground, honest and good heart. Amen, a tender heart. He said, having heard the word and keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So fruit with patience. So God, again, give me a tender heart. God, we pray no doubt for souls to be tenderized. Amen. Praying that souls will be softened. Amen. That they can receive the gospel. God, touch their hearts. Even as we preach, we need y'all to pray. God, touch their hearts. Amen. Touch their minds. God, to hear the word. Touch these souls as we out invited men and women. Touch their hearts, God. Tenderize their hearts. Amen. Again today, give us hearts to receive the word of God. Amen. Even in your own personal daily life. God, keep my heart tender towards you. Help me not get hardened towards you. Amen. Let my heart be sweet and my spirit be sweet towards you. Let's look at Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 5 through 8. Colossians 2, 5 through 8. Uh, the Apostle Paul was writing to them and to them. Again today, to stay on good ground. Stay on good ground tonight. It's good fruit on good ground. Amen. Good fruit on good ground. 
He says, for though I be absent in the flesh, this is five, this is Colossians 2, 5, though I be absent in the flesh, he was referring to himself, not being there. He says, yet I am with you in spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. He said, even though I'm not with you, right, outside these church doors, right? Hey Amen. It's important. It's important for you again and today to live the life. Amen. Outside the church door. Hey Amen. Good ground. Again, you, uh, you, you can't always live in the church. You can't stay in the church. It has to be in your heart. Hey Amen. It has to be down on the inside of your soul. He says, I'm away from you. He said, but again, uh, we praise, no doubt, as you stay steadfast in your faith. Steadfast in your faith. Stay on good ground. Stay on good ground tonight. It goes on and says, and as ye have therefore received Christ, the Lord, so walk ye in him. Walk in the Lord every day of your life. Keep your hearts tender towards God. Number seven, he says, rooted and built up in him. Rooted and built up in him. Built up in Christ. I'm putting my roots in Jesus. We're talking about where the seeds landed, amen. Again, sowing and he's good ground tonight. He says, rooted in Christ. And that's really, again, our prayer for every soul is to be rooted in Christ. Because, again, as we open up about all the different surfaces that they land, again, today, they, may, they don't land in Christ. It's so important to land in Christ Jesus. Again, uh, you can even parallel to that to, again, getting religious. Again, today, some will get religious. And so that's the hard surface. That's the stony ground. Uh, 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 by the wayside, they know about come. They may come to service, but nothing is really. They just doing it just to be here. But church today, we want to be here because we love the Lord, Amen. Because you're rooted in Christ. Again today, and so again, make that your prayer, God. I don't just want to be here, but let me be rooted in Christ. I don't want to just come because somebody invited me, but I'm coming to get something from God, Amen. I want to be rooted in Christ. He says, establish in the faith, establish my faith, God. Let me get established in the Lord. Let me get established in the church let me get established in walking with God amen because again those are not established any little thing that comes their way they're easily blown off and they fade away right let's keep going he says beware at least a man spoil you through philosophy he says beware at least a man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit so again back to that the hardness of hearts through philosophy man's ways man's thinkings man's intellect man's actions again today these things uh, again, it's what causes man to be hardened because he wants to serve God how he wants to serve him in his own philosophies, in his own ways. Everybody follow? But not the ways of the Lord. Again, today, his opinions or his, man, uh, uh, a man's opinions, a man's uh, ways, again, he says these things through vain deceit uh, uh, and traditions of men, he says, and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Again, based on what the world may say, how Christ is, but not after what he said, who he says he is. Amen. Again, today, we have to make sure good ground is that which, again, I'm going to follow the word of God. Following the word of God and nothing else. Again, today, again, because man's opinions are fallible. Amen. Man's opinions will uh, I miss the point. And so keeping, keeping your ground good, uh, keeping your ground good also, uh, keeping yourself on good ground. Why are you on good ground? It's back to what we talked about. The birds will come. Remember we talked about the birds coming? And they were the fowls of the air. I was reminded of a story, uh, again, uh, in Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. We can look at that real quickly. I'm going to get you out of here, folks. Genesis chapter 15 tonight. Uh, again, when you're trying to serve God, the fowls will come. The birds will come. As we sow seeds. Again, we mentioned this is a time of the year where the landscapers come. The landscapers come and they, they do what? They sow many seeds. And so... And, uh, Genesis 15, Genesis 15, let me know where y'all are there, Genesis 15, I'll let y'all know when I'm there, but Genesis 15, it, it talks about Abraham, and, and it talks about how he came to do a sacrifice one day, right, he came to do a sacrifice one day, the Bible says, let's pick it up in verse 9, we'll go there. He says, and he said unto him, take an heifer, three years old, and a she-goat, and three years old, of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and turtle doves, and young pigeon, and a young pigeon. And when 10, he says, and he took him, all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. When the fowls came down, in other words, the birds came down upon the carcass, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and lo, 
horror of great darkness fell upon him. Uh, but the part I want to bring up is that part about how he drove the birds away. Again, uh, and we're going to come back to the, how the, I was back thinking about the fowls of the air coming to eat the seeds, right? The birds, as we talk about sowing, amen, sow with it, amen. The birds would come and eat the seeds. They would come to eat those uh, invitations. They would come and eat the souls, those brand new precious seeds that have been sown. The birds would come in the fowls. The devil, he would come in and try to snatch them away before it gets planted. And so Abraham, he had to go and drive the birds away, right? To keep the birds off the, 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 the carcasses here, his sacrifice. And no doubt we have to keep the birds off of the souls of men and women. Amen. Keep the soul. You can't have this one. Devil, you can't have him, and so we pray for them, and we pray for you. We pray for your families. We pray for the youth. Amen. You can't have them. Keep the birds back. He had to run out there and keep the birds off of his sacrifice. No doubt in prayer, no doubt the same thing. That's what we're doing in prayer. God, you can't have this one. You can't touch this one. You can't have this. I saw an illustration one time. Uh, again, I don't know if it was a church. I had seen various ones, but it was uh, about Christ, what Jesus was doing on the cross. And this man was there, and and all these people, he, it was a man, it was like on stage, they were on stage at the church. And the man was holding, Jesus was holding, a man playing portraying Jesus, he was holding the people back. And all the demons and, and, and all of the people, whether it was alcoholism or whether it was friends, and, and all these people were behind him. And Jesus was holding him back from this man that was there, standing right there in front of the man who was portraying Christ. Everybody follow right? And so, come here, James, come here, James. Let me show you. Because y'all not, y'all, 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 y'all not following me. So imagine James, right? James is here. God is trying to deal with James. You come behind me. You go play the devil, right? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and so, no doubt, you're trying to get to James, right? Yeah. All right, reach out to me. And no doubt, but I, he was keeping him back. He was keeping him back. He was keeping him back, right? He was keeping him back and, and beating him back. Why? Begin, why? That's enough. That's enough. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But again, you begin to see how the, he was trying. He was trying. He was trying. To again devour James, Amen. And the devil does that, so no doubt we pray and we believe in it, and no doubt keeping them foul, the devour the fowls off of off the seeds, Amen. Pray for your seeds, pray for your friends, pray for your family members, church today, again today, because the devourer wants to come in and take them, Amen. And so uh, again, back to uh, what we're talking about tonight, so many, uh, there are so many seeds that come along, we sow in so many seeds, but again today, let us be interceders for Almighty God, Amen. Let's go to Samuel real quickly. Samuel also, chapter 2. Samuel chapter 2. The, the devil wants to take your harvest. Amen. A harvest. He does not want to see the great harvest grow. And after you've done all this hard work, he still is not going to stop. Second Samuel. He's not going to stop. He's not going to stop until, until he takes that. You even try to take it out this, out this grown. Right? Even after the harvest has come, you've seen great crops. He'll still come in and try to take that thing from you. Does everybody follow that? He'll still come in and try to devour that. And so in Samuel, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 23, chapter 23. It's a familiar passage of scripture about the mighty men of valor. David has some mighty men of valor. Amen. And today you make that your prayer. Let me be a mighty man of valor. Amen. Let me be a mighty Christian of valor. We need some more mighty men of valor. Amen. To say, you know, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to be on board. I'm going to be a soldier for Christ. Amen. A men and women for Christ. The Bible says in verse 10, just to jump into it, he said, he arose and smote the Philistines with his hand. His hand was weary and clave unto the sword. Okay, because the setting here is, the setting was, uh, uh, the setting here was uh, the, the Philistines had come. They had a great crop and various things. We mentioned, again, out in, war, out in the warfare, they got hungry naturally, and they want to come in and steal all the food. Uh, that they had already had and various things. Just coming, the enemy coming into the camp and stealing whatever they had. And so the same thing in life, the enemy wants to come into your camp and take what you have. He wants to come into the camp and take the precious seeds that have been sown and various souls. And so the Bible says, but this man, he said the Philistines came in verse 10. He said he, it, he, he fought the Philistines and he smote the Philistines. He destroyed the Philistines and, and, and until his hand was weary and his hand clave to the sword. And the Lord brought wrought a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to spoil. And so think about this, a sword was cleaving to this man's hand. 
man, as he was fighting and fighting and fighting, again today, our fighting, you take your mind back to those middle, middle medieval type, type scenarios. Those guys in there fighting with the uh, knight in shiny armors, they out there having real wars, amen. They didn't have no air force to come through. They had a, it was man on man, mano y mano, <laughs> right? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and what arms lift, it was, man. Uh, I remember we used to do that basic training. We had to have a, a combat battle, whatever they called it, tactical combat. We had to have our bayonet affixed to our rifles. Uh, now we had to do all these different things. I said, man, come on, Air Force, where y'all at? Uh, thought nobody would have fight like that no more, <laughs> right? But again today, hand-to-hand -hand combat is what it was. And so we had a training to do all these different things in hand-to-hand -hand combat. This was some real fighting. The Bible says his sword claimed to his hand. It was so he fought so intently and fought all these different Philistines to keep him off of that ground. Amen. In church today, we got to do the same thing. Listen to what it says. Let's keep reading. The Bible says in verse 11, he says, and after this, a shame man. Ah, hold on, pause, guys. My phone died. Somebody read it to me real quickly. My phone just died. and 12 and so he fought for the ground he fought for the lentils this ground was full of lentils this ground was full of harvest and, and, and again for us the souls of men and women God needs some folks that's going to fight amen to fight for the precious soul to fight for men and women to fight for the land the Bible says that he stood in the midst of the ground stay in the midst of the ground and says let's do that as we pray for one another as we love one another as we uh, uh, serve God I can't even say you cannot have this one though amen we pray for that we pray for this past harvest this weekend at a four-house Sunday. It was a great time in the Lord. Pray that they continue to come back. Pray for their families and their children. No doubt, continue to pray for our children's church. Amen. Various days that we fight and defend the ground. The Bible says and there was great victory. We see through the power of fighting, the spiritual warfare that we're in. Amen. A spiritual warfare that we're in, brothers and sisters, tonight, and we go to war, amen, and fight for the precious souls. Amen. So weeping in tears and sowing in tears and laboring and watering the ground and doing all these different things to keep that ground fertile, to keep that ground tenderized, keep your heart tender towards God, tender towards, again, today, the things of God that God have his way. Yes. We will, we will, we will. When we close up here in the minute, we're going to go to God in prayer for all these different requests. But again, the same thing, back to that warfare. Warfare. Warfare for your family. Warfare for your soul. Even for your own self. You say, you know, I'm going to keep my ground good, fertile ground. I'm not going to let the devourers come in and, and take that which, no doubt, belongs to me. I'm not going to let the enemy come in and steal my soul. I'm not going to let the enemy come in and take oh, my family so, my wife so, my husband so. We continue to fight and labor, no doubt, for those lost mankind. And no doubt we see this as we finish up tonight. As we continue to sow seed, brothers and sisters, tonight, let's continue to sow. And we believe in God for, he says, as we finish it, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. This is back to the Gospels. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. And we believe in God for a great, again, harvest. Amen. To come as we continue to labor for the Lord. Again, I'll be mindful again our weekend. A weekend coming up, a great time in the Lord, a Thursday night service this weekend. Okay, Palm Sunday, church, Palm Sunday. Let's glorify the Lord. Let's not let the rocks outdo us, amen. Let's not let the rocks outdo us this weekend, but let's come and celebrate Jesus in a mighty way. Any questions tonight? Let's fight for the lost mankind. Let's intercede for mankind, and let's, we'll see great victory come to pass, come to pass, amen. Through the power of prayer, amen. Through the power of prayer. God bless you. Reverend, if you're dismissed in prayer tonight.
Amen. Have a wonderful evening, folks.